Okay, I'll play with you. Do you want to play rap? Say hello to my little friend! Scarface The World Is Yours is one of the most interesting movie tie-in games I think ever made. A lot like the Thing video game which continued on the story from the ending in the movie, The World Is Yours kind of does the same but also tells a what-if story. Where if at the end of Scarface, Tony Montana happened to turn around during that iconic shootout to see that old mate was sneaking up behind him with the super shotgun. Not only that, but then what would happen if he survived the rest of the shootout and escaped? Well, Sonny Jim, that's the premise for Scarface The World Is Yours. People might all be talking about Cyberpunk 2077's open world and the vast emptiness of Night City, but in my opinion, it all pales in comparison to an old video game made almost two decades ago, about one of the best Christmas movies of all time. Yeah, okay, Scarface might not be a Christmas movie per se, but hey, it sure does have a lot of snow. In the game, you get to play through an awesome prologue, which recreates the climactic shootout of the film. You're then thrust into the open world of Miami with only your balls and your word, and Tony ain't breaking those for nobody. Okay, so make it quick. I don't have all day either, baby, you know? After being chased out of Miami by Sosa and having his assets seized by the feds, Tony then returns to the city four months later to start from scratch and rebuild his empire. Your initial goal is just to reclaim your mansion, something that requires a measly 10,000 bucks to acquire, before you then go about reclaiming territory across the city and earning back your reputation. Yeah, and I should say too, if you haven't seen the movie, a lot of this is not gonna really make all that much sense and probably half the references are gonna go right over your head. But as a video game follow-up to one of the most 80s movies ever made, there's very little to fault here in its faithfulness to its source material. What do you go by? Montana. But you can call me Tony, okay, pussycat? Okay. You can even walk around Tony's mansion and admire the authenticity to the architecture right down to his office. Alright, so before I go too far, I'm going to take a quick moment to stop and thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. I'd only ever promote a product that I use myself, and I'm honestly able to say that ExpressVPN is one of those. Going off the way that 2020's been, there's no better time to protect yourself when you're online, and a VPN is perfect for that. VPN is short for a virtual private network, and without using one of these, you're basically putting all of your personal information at risk. Your emails, passwords, and everything else that goes along with it. Using a VPN though, all of your data goes through an encrypted tunnel, which means that other people can't gain access to it. ExpressVPN routes this information through over 3,000 servers, with you also being able to choose from appearing in over 90 countries. This can really come in handy for gaming, it can prevent DDoS attacks, it can keep your details anonymous, plus you can also buy and play games in different regions. And what's also great about ExpressVPN is that it doesn't affect your lag or server connection speeds either. In fact, speeds with ExpressVPN are pretty damn solid across the board. You don't really have to look all that far either to see people saying good things about this too. It's got good reviews on sites like CNET and TechRadar, not to mention lots of good user reviews as well. I've been using this for well over six months now without any kind of issue. All you gotta do is click that connect button and then you're good to go. But on the off chance that something goes wrong, they also offer up 24 seven customer support. So yeah, look, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's no real reason to not use a VPN at all times. So to find out how you can get three months for free, head on over to expressvpn slash gman and get started. I know a lot of people kind of label this thing as a GTA clone and definitely in terms of how it looks and feels, it's not the worst comparison. I mean, GTA Vice City was literally just based off Miami in the 80s and The World Is Yours takes place in Miami in the 80s. Vice City was heavily inspired by the Scarface movie, and now the Scarface game feels like it's heavily inspired by Vice City. And then visually, I'd kinda say that it looks a lot like a San Andreas mod. That's also probably because the game runs on the Renderware engine, which Rockstar put to great effect with the first three GTA games. But it's really more than just a GTA clone, it's more like a drug empire management sim combined with a third person shooter. Okay, you fucking let it go. Unlike the Grand Theft Auto games, shooting the cops really isn't a good idea and you actually lose points for doing it. Also, Tony has something of a moral code in that he doesn't like harming innocent people, in fact you can't even shoot civilians at all. I mean, Tony is happy to destroy countless lives by mass producing and selling drugs on a global scale, but I guess that actually shooting someone is one step too far. And while he might not kill someone with bullets, he sure is going to kill them with words. You know, you look like you haven't had a good fuck in years. So, let me get this straight. You're aiming to add to my long list of bad ones? 
There's a pretty decent roster of voice actors in this thing too. You've got Michael York, Ricky Gervais, Ice-T, James Woods, and even Bear Margera as a Stonehead liquor store owner. And I'd say he's got life experience with at least half of that character. Oh, hell yeah, man. This place is yours if you want it, and I'll definitely keep working for you. They even got back the same actors who played Manny and Lopez. You have respect for this business, Tony. You are someone I can trust. But look, we've got to talk about the guy doing Tony's voice, which kind of sounds passable, but then at other times, it's just kind of, well, I don't know. Oh, what I got? I got a nice house, lots of yayo, lots of cash to spend on you. I only date guys with BMWs. Apparently, Al Pacino himself approved this guy, but that means about as much as James Cameron saying he approved Terminated Dark Fate. Honestly, though, he's not that bad, I guess, and you almost kind of stop thinking about it after a while anyway. What do you think that cockroach is doing? What kind of operation is he running here? What they've really nailed, though, is his appearance and his personality. And Tony's likeness has been carried across pretty well into the game engine. Even more so considering just how old this game is at this point. Hey, do you know how to keep a guy happy? The story doesn't take itself too seriously, unlike the film, and there's a light-hearted tone to the whole thing that feels like a combination of a watered-down Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row. It is far from being PG, though, when every second word that comes out of someone's mouth is usually an F-bomb. But it is far from the gritty 80s crime epic that we got in the movie itself. From personal experience, I can confirm that cocaine is a hell of a drug, but I think despite the game having a very cocaine-centric theme, you don't even actually see anybody doing it in the entire game. You will see a whole lot of it though, as it forms the basis for pretty much everything you do here. Aside from driving all over the island in various sports cars or boats, you'll also be involved in the mass murder and genocide of the vast majority of Miami's criminal underworld, mostly just in pursuit of the yayo. Buzz, buzz, gimme yayo. You like that, huh? The world is yours also has some surprisingly good shooting, and a big part of that, I think, is how the weapons sound and feel. Sound effects are eardrum bustingly loud and weapons feel impactful too. Both the shotgun and the Desert Eagle can take entire limbs off like it's Soldier of Fortune or something, leaving stumps behind where fountains of blood just spray out. You got it's actually one of the better shotguns in any video game I've ever played and it's one that just doesn't get enough credit. The sniper rifle in this game is so powerful too that it just seems to vaporize an enemy's head entirely. Then there's pistols, submachine guns, and of course Tony's little friend, the M16. You want to play rough? Okay, let's play rough. There's also an LMG, which again has the habit of turning limbs into liquid, and then a goddamn RPG that's so expensive to buy ammo for that I'd think it'd actually be cheaper having a cocaine habit than keeping this thing stocked up. You've also got the iconic chainsaw, which really isn't as fun as you'd hope it would be, though it does dismember enemies pretty nicely. Enemies can carry this thing too, like their fucking Dr. Salvador from Resident Evil 4. This is give me mama. You get some pretty detailed stats on where you're hitting someone when you're shooting them, even down to if you're hitting them in their left or right nut. It's pretty brutal. The only thing I don't like about the shooting is how Tommy moves so slowly when reloading, which kind of makes you a bit of a sitting duck, or, I don't know, a slow-moving duck, I guess. And as a lame attempt to make certain missions harder, they take away all of your weapons at the start of them. Otherwise, I think for a combat system from 2006, it's kind of hard to fault. It's definitely better than the shooting in Vice City or San Andreas, I mean, that's for sure. Now, a big part of the combat in this comes down to balls. Yeah, Tony's balls. And I don't think I've ever seen a game make so many references to a man's testicles in my entire life. I'd always thought that Rogue Warrior won the award for that, but this thing just kind of blows it out of the water. Scarface has got a really handy lock-on system when firing weapons, but the catch is that using the lock-on system reduces the amount of balls you get per kill by about half. This is important, right? Because killing enemies fills up your balls meter. And when your bowls meter is full, you can then go into a rage mode where the camera shifts to a first person perspective. Now you've got infinite ammo and then every kill gives back health points, which is one of the only ways to get it back. And I gotta say too, that they really captured the feeling of Tony's inner psychopath when this thing is activated. Another way to fill this thing up quickly is by taunting enemies after killing them, which is a bit pointless to be honest, I mean, considering they're dead and they're not gonna really hear the insult. But look, if it gets me more balls, then I'm all for it. 
Talking to people is actually a pretty big mechanic in the game too. You can often have conversations with random NPCs you come across and some of these actually being pretty funny to listen to. Hey Mr. Montana, can I sit on your lap? There's even five women that the game calls femme fatales who, when you get enough balls, will eventually hang around at your mansion dressed in the kind of outfits that even your mum's gonna blush at. And hearing Tony interact with these girls does have some pretty amusing results. I got a tiger you can pet all day, baby. Well, all right then. One of these is actually voiced by a model named Vita Guerra. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Let me just say, Sonny Jim, that name takes me back to browsing the internet in 2005 and becoming a master at alt tabbing whenever my parents walked into the room. The other main mechanic is Tony's reputation, and at the end of the day, all of the balls in the world won't help you if you haven't got any cred, and upgrading this reputation level becomes one of the main focuses for the entire game. Ultimately, you're taking over the four districts of the city. You've got Little Havana, Downtown, and then finally North and South Beach before heading to Bolivia to finally take down that cockroach Sosa. The thing is though, once you've played this for a few hours and got the gist of it, you've pretty much seen all there is to see and do. And things don't really get changed up all that much, just kind of like going through the motions again and again to reach that reputation cap. Regardless of what you're doing from mission to mission, the ultimate goal is to just sell cocaine. The point of all of this being to gain back your reputation. To raise your reputation, you complete missions. You take over gang turf, you buy exotic items like sports cars, boats, and cosmetics for the mansion. I love this country, man. But to buy all of this stuff, you need cash. And to make cash, you have to sell coke. In the beginning, to get cocaine, you first need a lead on a dealer, which is always done by completing some kind of randomly generated mission. This could be killing a bunch of enemies through to protecting someone from an ambush. There's over half a dozen of these in total, and they always seem completely randomized. Sometimes they'll take two to three minutes to beat, or sometimes they'll take five to ten. Anyway, after that, you've then got the lead on a nearby dealer, right? Where you can then head over to meet them and make a deal to try to get as much product as possible. This part of the process never changes, it just depends on how far you are into the game, whether or not you'll be buying 1 kilograms of coke or 30. At the start of the game, you're just simply making deals with guys on the street, but the most you can sell to these assholes is a couple of kilos, and ain't nobody got time to be sitting there making 20 or 30 deals. You don't know how dear this cost me. Eventually, once you unlock a storehouse, you can start pushing bigger deals up to multiple kilos at a time. Then eventually, you'll start smuggling it into Miami from the nearby islands. And that's where the big bucks start rolling in. You'll go from making 20,000 bucks per deal to upwards of 20 million. The thing is though, you're always the one having to do this manually. Despite Tony hiring all of these people and expanding his empire, he still micromanages the whole operation like a complete obsessed asshole. Leads from the island will eventually get you a lot more coke to sell. I think the max is about 30 kilos. But some of these lead missions are absolutely fucking dreadful and they go on forever. And it sure doesn't help that you're being attacked by the cartel down there pretty much incessantly. Give me mana. Smuggling coke back into Miami is also pretty tedious. So not only do you need to make it out of the islands in the first place, trying to avoid all of the pirates who are going to attack you on sight. But then, once you've finally reached US waters, you've still got to make it to one of your storehouses. This time, avoiding all of the Coast Guards. You got EC2 aircraft with satellite track and shit. You got Bell 209 assault choppers up the ass. That's no duck walk. Even then though, once you finally get the coke back to a storehouse, you still have to manually drive around and pick up all of the cash earned from all of your fronts. Which involves driving to all of them one by one. Obviously making it more difficult the more fronts you own. Oh yeah, and because it doesn't make sense for someone to leave millions of dollars on the sidewalk, these cash pickups are usually around the back of the buildings too. As you expand across all of Miami, you're basically having to drive across all of the major islands to collect your cash each time. Each island has 4-5 to five fronts, so that's roughly 16 stops. And then, finally, after all this is done, you still need to launder the money in a bank. Every interaction in this game, whether it be with a dealer, a seller, or a bank attendant, requires this timed button prompt, where you've got to take your finger off the button at just the right amount of time to maximize your result. It's not too hard, but it never gets any easier despite how far you are into the game. I got a wife at home, man, and she's big. And over or under shooting that sweet spot could be the difference in the bank taking a 4% cut on your investment or a goddamn 30% cut. That's not peanuts. Baby need her meat. And again, it is something you're going to be doing over and over and over again. Well, I got what it takes on it. Fronts are places like a pawn shop, 
fast food joint, a hotel, or the Babylon Club. You can even buy that same hotel that Tony and his buddy Angel got ambushed in by the Colombians in the movie. And most of the missions are just a means to unlock more fronts, which is in turn just a means to push more coke and make more money. Sometimes during distribution, fronts are going to come under attack, so before you can even pick up the cash road and get to the next one, you got to hop out of your car and shoot all of the rival gang members trying to cut in on the action. And this is all randomized too, so sometimes it's actually worth just reloading a save file and starting it all over again. And I don't know man, it just kind of seems weird to me how Tony's still making the rounds like he's some kind of baggage handler, even when he's pushing millions and millions of dollars of product at once. It'd be like Bill Gates hanging out at a shopping mall trying to sell people copies of Windows 10. You can order your driver to drop off any vehicle to you within seconds. You can fast travel with limos and seaplanes to make the journey even shorter. And at the end of the game, you get your own plantation and can even have 30 kilos sent to one of your warehouses instantly for easy delivery. But even then, you still need to manually deliver this stuff around Miami. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that this is a very repetitive game. And yet, despite all of this and how tedious the whole thing can feel, I still couldn't stop playing it. You're doing a good job, man. Keep it up. If this was just some kind of generic open world shooter, well then it might have been forgettable. But I mean, come on son, you're playing as Tony motherfucking Montana. A guy who proved that cocaine literally makes you bulletproof. I mean look, a lesser known fact about the end of the movie was that Tony didn't actually die from getting shot in the back. Nah son, he died from drowning in the pool. This game is a classic example of the license carrying along what would otherwise be a pretty mediocre product. Screaming like a psycho as you gun down a platoon of gang members with an M16. In between pushing 30 million dollars worth of blow is just the ultimate power fantasy. Oh, I bet. Getting through the whole thing and finally taking down Sosa took me about 15 hours. And then after that, I still had a bunch of exotics and other things I had left to buy. But at that point, it was just about grinding out distribution deals over and over. To put it into perspective, once you can order 30 keys directly to one of your storehouses, you're looking at about $30 million after distribution, assuming your fronts don't get attacked. But now consider there's multiple exotics to purchase which cost upwards of $20 million each, along with Tony's multiple business investments which can run up to $60 million each. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff to buy. I wish Manny and Gina were here to see this. Outside of playing as Tony, you can also complete side missions as Tony's driver and Tony's enforcer, who kind of looks a bit like a T-800 with those sunglasses on. These missions are pretty basic, you just kind of drive to an area, kill a bunch of people and then drive away. I mean, once you've done one of these, you've literally done all of them. Probably best of all though is Tony's assassin, a badass bitch running around in a goddamn schoolgirl outfit. What are you looking at? Beat it! But look, if these developers think they can hold my interest simply because they chuck in a bit of TNA with a character like this, well, then, yeah, you guys know me pretty well. Yo, you, just keep walking. When it got released, I remember this game getting some pretty lukewarm reviews, and 6s and 7s out of 10 were pretty common. It's not hard to see why that is, though, when you start looking closely at some of the game's more repetitive mechanics. That repetition and lack of variety is definitely a big criticism. But one of the main things that stuck out to me, which isn't even that much of a big deal, was that there's no jump button. And I don't know why. Even Grand Theft Auto 3 had a jump button, and that thing was out, like, what, five years before this? I mean, you can swim, but you can't jump. I'll also say that some of the missions in this game are pretty damn dreadful, including everyone's favorite escort quests. Most of which are terrible, and the person you're supposed to be protecting is gonna always get their ass handed to them time and time again. The soundtrack in this thing is very hit and miss too. I'd just say some of it is just outright bad. Apart from that, some of the artists in here just make no sense whatsoever. Like Cypress Hill, D12, how about Johnny Cash and Rob Zombie? I mean look, nothing against Cypress Hill, Johnny Cash or Rob Zombie, but that just seems really out of place. The only station that makes any sense is the 80s station, and the one that uses all the music from the movie. Everything else, to me, just doesn't fit. It also seems the radio has a mind of its own in this thing, and no matter how many times I turn it off, it just keeps turning itself back on. It's kind of annoying because the music they've composed for the game, along with the stuff taken out of the film, is leaps and bounds better than fucking LL Cool J. Yeah, remember that, asshole? Still though, there's some pretty cool mechanics in here which I think are almost ahead of the curve. If you pull out a weapon, for instance, NPCs are going to react to it. Hey, mister, you don't scare me with that. And cops behave accordingly to the crime committed. So they're more likely to be forgiving if you've only caused a hit and run accident versus causing all that gang warfare with a Mac 10. 
The distribution system has some neat quirks too, with the demand for drugs increasing or decreasing in the various sections of the city, depending on whether or not you only sell in specific areas. I also think the mechanic of controlling almost everything from your phone is way ahead of its time too, considering that smartphones weren't even really that much of a thing back then. Hey, listen, listen to me. I need my car, okay? Bring my car now. Oh, and I do have to talk about the various ways to play this game too. Now, if you're playing it on the PlayStation 2 or the Xbox, well, there's not really gonna be any issues here. PC, on the other hand, is an absolute nightmare, and getting this thing to run in the first place can be really hit and miss. Do you wanna play around? Then, even if you do manage to get it going, there's dramas with the controls. Mostly just the god-awful mouse acceleration, which is horrendous. The frame rate is also incredibly choppy at times, and V-Sync doesn't seem to work either, which messes with the game speed, resulting in, among a heap of other things, dialogue overlapping. I got a place in Miami you wouldn't believe. This is not how I usually conduct business. Oh, this isn't business, lady. Just purely for pleasure. I'm just not up for this right now. I will say though that the PC version is kind of worth it, if only to play the game in widescreen with other settings like anti-aliasing turned on. And it does make it a far better looking game than the console version. And at least it's stable in the sense of it never crashing either. In the 20 or so hours I played this, I didn't have a single crash to desktop or even an error that entire time. For a port that's otherwise complete rubbish, that is a goddamn miracle. Scarface The World Is Yours again I think is one of those games that could really benefit from a remake or if nothing else a remaster. At a time when Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption 2 and now Cyberpunk are still pretty popular, I think that most people would really enjoy playing a game like this. If nothing else, just to snort a fat line of nostalgia. And remember how much fun games used to be back then? When developers would add in an assassin dressed in a schoolgirl outfit without a second thought. You just walk away, you ain't seen nothing. So say goodnight to the bad guy, or if nothing else, at least say hello to his little friend. Gosh! <laughs>